video, we're going to talk about how to rotate conics. Before we can do that, we have to go back to talking about matrices. Uh, so there's something called matrix basis theorem. And it goes like this. If I have this matrix, A, B, C, D, and I multiply it by the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1, I get A, B, C, D. Okay. Now, another way to think about this, other than just oh, a matrix multiplied by the identity returns itself, is you can think of this as here, I have a unit vector. So if a unit vector is a vector of length 1 um, in the x direction. So 1, 0, right, is just this, 1, 0, this point here. I also have 0, 1, which is up here. And what I have done is when I multiply by this matrix, I transform the point 1, 0 into the point AB. And when I multiply by this matrix, I transform the point 0, 1 into the point CD. And that's going to be important because what this means is if I want to find a way um, to generate some kind of transformation, like a rotation, for example, then I can say, okay, well, how, how can I get 1, 0 to be some kind of rotated point? And how can I get 0, 1 to be some kind of rotated point? And once I rotate 1, 0 into some new position AB and 0, 1 into some new position CD, I can just fill in this matrix and then I'll have a rotation. Okay, So let's look at how that actually works here as we try to rotate conics. Before we rotate conics specifically, we're just going to look at rotating you know, just kind of a general point. So I have, um, let's say I want to rotate... Uh, some point x, y to a new point up here through an angle of alpha. So I'm going to rotate like this. This new point I'm going to call x prime, y prime. Okay. To do this, I'm going to do what I just talked about. I'm going to look at the point 1, 0. I'm going to look at the point 0, 1. I'm going to say, OK, if I rotate this point 1, 0 uh, through an angle of alpha, let's say my, it's going to be like up here. So this angle is alpha. And this is kind of a nice curved thing. Because if I'm rotating the point, the distance the point has from the origin should be the same. So this distance that it starts out is a distance one away, right? And then I rotate it, and now my distance here should also be one away. And if I want to find the new coordinates of this point, I should be able to do that because I have a right triangle. So I know that the horizontal distance here is going to be cosine alpha, since it's just going to be um, the length of the hypotenuse times um, uh, cosine alpha, and the length of the hypotenuse is just 1. And then the vertical distance, which is going to be the length of the hypotenuse times sine alpha. So 1 times sine alpha is sine alpha. So my new point here is cosine alpha, sine alpha. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my point zero, 1. So I'm going to rotate this to a new point. That was maybe a little too of a much of a dramatic bend. Let's make it more like this. Here. So just this little angle here is alpha. So that means that the full angle that I'm getting, like this, is going to be 90 plus alpha. So that means the horizontal position of this point is going to be cosine of 90 plus alpha since the you know, hypotenuse is still of length 1. And then the vertical position is going to be sine of 90 plus alpha. And that'll be the new location of the point. Since this is the new, these are the two new locations of the point, I can now use the basis theorem and say, OK, well, I transform 1, 0 into cosine alpha, sine alpha. So I'm going to have a new, my rotation matrix that's going to transform a point x, y into a point x prime, y prime, I can write as this x prime, y prime, which is my new point, is going to be equal to uh, the point x, y multiplied by some kind of transformation. And I say, well, this column 
represents uh, one zero, and I transform one zero into cosine alpha sine alpha. And I transform zero one into negative sine alpha cosine alpha. And now this is going to allow me to take a point x, y, multiply it by this uh, matrix, and maybe alpha is, I don't know, 70 degrees, right? So you do cosine 70, sine 70, et cetera, multiply this matrix by this matrix, and you have your new point x prime, y prime, which is just the point x, y rotated by 70 degrees. So we can now put this into a nice equation form, right? Because if I do my matrix multiplication, I find that x prime, is equal to x times cosine alpha minus y times sine alpha, and y prime equals x times sine alpha plus y times cosine alpha. Okay, so these are my rotations. But the thing here is I am interested not just in this, but because of the kinds of problems we're doing. I'm going to be interested in actually solving these equations for x and y. Now, that looks like a really hard thing to do, right? You could try to do some kind of like combination or substitution, etc. But there's another really easy way to do it that we're going to use instead. Um, I'm basically going to say, well, if I want to go from x prime, y prime to x, y, then all I'm doing is I'm taking x prime, y prime, and I'm rotating them by negative alpha, right? So x, y is simply going to be equal to x prime times cosine of negative alpha minus y prime times sine of negative alpha, and then x prime sine of negative alpha plus y prime cosine of negative alpha. And I know it doesn't make a ton of sense as to like why I'm interested in getting it in terms of x and y. But the reason we're doing the negative alpha is because I'm simply, I'm basically unrotating, right? If I have a point x prime, y prime that's already been rotated and I want to return it to x, y, then this will do that. So this is going to give me x prime cosine alpha minus uh, plus because here cosine is even, so this just goes away. Here, sine is odd, so I pull the sine, uh, negative sine out. So I get plus y prime uh, sine alpha. Then down here, sine is odd, so I have negative x prime sine alpha. Cosine is even, so I have plus y prime cosine alpha. And so this is also going to be a very useful thing for us to, to know. Actually, more useful than these, though it's, it's good to have both of them. And you're going to see why right now as we do an example. So... I want to rotate a conic. Um, so let's take uh, 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 100. I'm going to try to find an equation for the graph rotated by 70 degrees. Okay, So my alpha here is going to be 70. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to, I, I basically want to get this equation and I want a new equation that has x primes and y primes in it. Because then what I'm going to end up getting, right, is this is a nice ellipse. If I, I'm going to sketch this first. So just to kind of show you where we're going. So I have a nice ellipse with one, two, three, four, five, right? I could, I could get this as x squared over 25 plus y squared over four equals one. So then 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And quickly just draw my vertices. Again, it looks like this. I want to rotate this by 70 degrees, right? So the way I could do that is like I could draw a line if I had a, like a protractor or something, measure like set this is, let's say this is 70 degrees. And then the distance away needs, from the origin needs to be held constant. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One, two, three, four, five. I can also rotate my y-axis. This is not going to be great, but we're trying. Um, so then one, two, one, two. And now I can sketch my rotated ellipse. Okay. 
So this is my original ellipse just rotated by 70 degrees. So this is what we're trying to do. And the equation for this ellipse is going to be in terms of x prime and y prime because I, I have a new set of points, right? So we need to get my original equation into x prime and y prime. So let's go ahead and do that. The way we're going to do that is via substitution because I know uh, that x is equal to x prime cos alpha plus y prime sine alpha. So I'm just going to substitute. I'm going to write this is equal to 4 times x prime cos alpha plus y prime sine alpha. So you see why we, we flipped this into finding x in terms of x prime and y prime and y in terms of x prime and y prime because now it allows us to take an unprimed equation that's not rotated and turn it into an equation that is rotated. Uh, so then I'm going to do plus 25 times negative x prime sine alpha plus y prime cosine alpha equals 100. And this is square 2. And now I have to square everything. So we actually need to FOIL these out. So this is going to become 4 uh, x prime squared cosine squared alpha plus 8 x prime y prime cosine alpha sine alpha plus 4y prime squared sine squared alpha plus 25x prime squared sine squared alpha minus 50x prime y prime sine alpha cos alpha plus 25y prime squared cos squared alpha equals 100. Just barely enough room for that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. And the right number of terms. Okay. Once we've done all this, now we want to combine like terms. And when I say combine like terms, uh, I mean that we want to take everything that has an x prime squared and push, shove those together. Everything that has an xy, uh, x prime, y prime, I want to take and I want to put those together. And then the same thing with my y primes. I want to put those together. So let's do that. So my x prime squared term is going to look like this. If I factor out the x prime squared, I have 4 cosine squared alpha plus 25 sine squared alpha times x prime squared minus 42 cosine alpha sine alpha x prime y prime uh, plus 4 sine squared alpha plus 25 cosine squared alpha y prime squared equals 100. Then I plug in alpha equals 70 degrees. And you might ask, why didn't I do that right away? The reason you don't do that right away is because then you're going to be foiling out a bunch of disgusting decimals. And you might say you prefer that to this, but I promise you're less likely to make a mistake uh, if you keep it like this than if you plug in the decimals earlier. Additionally, it's very difficult for you to compare answers or check work with somebody else or have me look at it if you just have a mess of decimals. Like you have this step and then you just have a bunch of decimals. Whereas if I look here, I can say, okay, you foiled everything correctly, so I'm more easily to able to locate your mistake. When you do FOIL, uh, plug everything in for alpha equals 70 degrees, you should have 22.54x prime squared minus 13.50x prime y prime plus 6.46y prime squared equals 100. And this is the rotated equation of our ellipse. You do not have to go ahead and put this into the standard form of an ellipse to graph it because you cannot do that, right? This term, the x prime y prime term, prevents you from completing the square and putting it into something nice. And at the very beginning of the unit, when we have the general form of the equation of a conic, we saw that x y term and it's never popped up, right? This is where it comes in. Um, it shows up when your graph is rotated. So if we have a conic that is on an axis that is rotated, um, or at some kind of angle, it's not the major axis is not nice along either the x or the y, that's when you're going to get this term. Okay, so you just stop here. This is the equation of your ellipse. So, one more thing that I want to show you in this video 
which is that, remember that uh, our original general equation is ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus uh, dx plus ey plus f equals zero. This is the general form of our conic equation. When you transform this into something else that is rotated, right? If I were to rotate this entire thing, I'm going to get a new set of coefficients. a prime x prime squared plus b prime x prime y prime plus c prime y prime squared plus d prime x prime plus e prime y prime plus f prime equals zero. Right? So I take a conic and rotate it. Not only is it going to be in terms of x prime and y prime, but the numbers out front are not going to stay the same. Right? There's there's no reason they would stay the same if we're rotating by like sine alpha, and you know that means you have to multiply by whatever sine of alpha is. So something special when you go from here to here and you transform in either direction actually is there is this quantity b squared minus 4ac. This is called the discriminant. And this quantity is invariant under rotation. What that means is b squared minus 4ac in the original equation that is unrotated is equal to b prime squared minus 4a prime c prime. Invariant quantities are very, very important. If you go into math or physics at all, invariant quantities uh, are, are, are huge. They're enormous. Um, and they're always really important to take note of. And they allow you to do very magical things sometimes. So that's an important thing to keep in mind, that this quantity is invariant. Okay. Now, this quantity does something special for us. And the, it, part of it being invariant is nice because if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, it means that our conic is an ellipse. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, then we have a parabola. And if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, then you have a hyperbola. Okay. And this is also true. All these things are true if you have b prime squared minus 4a prime c prime. Okay. So if I just take a random example, if I say 7x squared plus 13xy plus 3y squared plus 4x minus 2y plus 11 equals 0. And I want to know what kind of conic this is. Then I just look at the discriminant. I do b squared minus 4ac is going to be uh, 13 squared minus 4 times 7 times 3. So this is equal to 85, and that's greater than 0. So that means that we have a hyperbola. Okay. So um, that is how you rotate conics. You have to be careful with your algebra. Um, and this is also a quick and easy way to check for what kind of conic you have. Thanks for watching.